Hello, I'm Michael, and I'd like to go over some of the 3D printed blast gates that I've been using here in my shop. And uh, this is a six inch version. Uh, these are primarily intended for the American sizes of, of dust collection devices, uh, mainly because that's what I have. But uh, I could probably really, uh, help make other ones that are a little bit uh, different sizes and probably some additional spacers for available woods in other countries. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm making these out of plastic. These are This is actually PETG. Uh, I have a, a bunch of it left over at this point. So it works pretty well for me. Um, I see no reason you would have to use PETG. You can use PLA, PLA or anything else you wanted, but don't go nuts. These are, these are tools and they don't really actually have a lot of abuse to them. Uh, they're designed so that I can print a, I have a six inch, a four inch, and a 2.5 inch version. Uh, this is the six inch here. Here's the 2.5 inch version installed, and sorry, the four inch version installed, and here's the uh, 2.5 inch version. The difference here is I was able to print the insert that goes in. Uh, the way you assemble these is these are M4 by 12 screws, and there, there are screw round holes on one side, and on the other side, they are hex, and then on this side, they're round and hex, so they, they, line, up, they, opposite, they line up opposite each other. Uh, line up the, the screw the screw holes. There's a spacer here that's 3D printed as well, so that can be swapped out. You can always print a larger or taller version if you want to for thicker wood. Uh, I wouldn't go much thinner than what I do. I'm using 3 16 inch uh, very thin very thin wood as the, as the blast beat material. Uh, it's good and solid and it works pretty well. So what you do is you, put, you assemble this together. You, you put the M4 by 12 screws in, tighten it all down, and the first step is you take the uh, wood and you slide it in. Now, what I've done here first is I've, I've glued a strip of wood on the edge. Uh, this is about 15 inches and it's cut such that the, the width of this actually fits pretty tightly in here. Let's see if I can do this with my hand. And the width fits pretty tightly. So it goes in and you use this as, this is a stop block on this end. So now that you got that hole marked, you would then take a pencil and mark around the inside. Mark around the inside. And take this back out again. Now you have a circle that marks exactly where you want to cut. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a, a Forstner bit on my, my drill press and cut this out. And then I'll go and get a jigsaw and cut around it and usually sand, usually uh, finish the cut with, or kind of clean up the cut a little bit with my, uh, one of, one of my sanders, my, my spindle sander. And then what you end up doing is you have a working model. I have one from the oven. So this one is when I've already cut the circle out. I didn't clean up the sander, but I will slide this out such that the edge of the, of the circle just lines up with this plastic here. And then I'll glue another strip on over here. And then later on, I'll usually remove this part. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it doesn't really matter. But now you have a gate that will slide fairly easily, open and closed. And whenever it closes, it closes completely. I typically put the smoother side of the plywood so that it's facing up. Uh, these do have a thicker and a thinner ring. So this one is intended for something to go on the outside of it. And the other side, I usually print with one that is intended to go for something on the inside. It doesn't really matter how you cut the hole. You can use the inside or the outside one. I usually use the outside because I figure it's the largest amount of, uh, of surface area. I've never had one of these jam due to debris or anything, but they sometimes do collect debris on the surface. So don't be surprised if you're, as you're opening it, it's a little crunchy. But this fits pretty tightly with the size of wood that I'm using and the spacers that I've chosen. So this should be pretty good. Um, the trick, whenever you install these, you want to make certain that you, uh, if you have a large and a small size, so something goes on the inside, you want to make certain that whenever you put this, whenever you, you do this, you want to make certain that the device is closed. And the reason why is this goes on the inside and sits there. And this is my four inch to two and a half inch adapter, for example. And that goes inside. I'll usually just either screw or, or uh, glue this together if it's plastic to plastic. Um, I usually just use some sort of self-tapping screw. Uh, since I'm usually going into metal at this point, I would just use a, a metal screw and not worry about having to make a hole. But the reason you want to make certain it's closed is this hole is usually larger than that diameter. So if this goes in, it tends to lock this in place and now I can't open this. So 
you don't want that to happen, so you do this. Once this is now mounted, this will slide freely, open and closed. And then I'll just use a hose clamp on the other. Um, my four inch installed here. Uh, as you can see, I just use scrap wood for much of this. But here we have the metal screws that go in. I'm gonna tape around this with some of this, this metalized tape just to make it nice and solid. I've got a hose clamp down here and there's my working gate for my four inch size wood.